It's been quite an up and down season for the Chicago Cubs so far, but after turning their season around, they're in a position here late in the season to make a run not just at a playoff spot, but at the NL Central crown. On June 8th, the Cubs lost their fourth game in a row, dropping to a 26 and 36 record, seven and a half games back and in fourth place in the NL Central. To this point, they'd had one of the better offenses in the league, fifth in run scored, with all of their slash line ranking in the top 10, their WRC Plus also ranked 10th, and they were 8th in F War for position players. Their starting rotation was getting the job done as well, ranked 6th in ERA, 10th in FIP, and 8th in F War, struggling a bit with getting strikeouts where they were 24th in strikeout percentage, but they were top 10 in walk percentage, average allowed, and homers per 9. But the bullpen here was the clear weak spot for the Cubs early on, ranked 24th in ERA, 20th in FIP, and 24th in F War, about the exact opposite of the rotation, where they were 7th in strikeout percentage, but near the bottom in walk percentage, average allowed, and homers per 9. So we've got a well-rounded top 10 offense, a starting rotation that pitches to contact very well, but a bullpen that really struggles with giving up walks and getting hit around. And for the Cubs, this wasn't a winning formula to start the season. But since June 9th, the Cubs have gone 35 and 22, putting them at a 61 and 58 record, tied for second in the NL Central, three and a half games back of Milwaukee, and they're only one game back of Miami for the final wildcard spot. So with this season so far being a tale of two halves here, what's changed for the Cubs that's helped launch them back into playoff contention? But real quick, before we get into that, I'm happy to let you guys know that the Smarter Baseball merch store is finally open. Open. And to thank you guys for all the support that you've shown the channel so far, everything in the store is 15% off until August 26th. I can't thank you guys enough for helping to build the channel as much as you already have. I can't wait to see where we get to take this thing. Check out the link in the description. Get yourself something nice. Now let's get back to the Cubs. That's enough of that. The focal point of this team all year has been the offense, which has been one of the better in baseball, and it's gotten even better as the season's gone on. Since June 9th, they've been second in runs scored, fourth in average, sixth in on-base percentage, slugging percentage, and OPS, eighth in WRC+, and fifth in position player F4. So a top 10 offense early in the season that's taken a step forward with most of their offense of game. But not much has really changed here for these Cubs hitters. They don't hit the ball too hard and they tend to hit it on the ground and a lot of weaker hit ground balls isn't exactly what you're going for as a hitter but when they do hit it in the air, they do a pretty decent job of making the most of it. They were ninth in homers per fly ball up until June 9th, and they've been 12th since then. Now, if there's been one slight difference here during this hot streak, it's been how they've been approaching their at-bats, getting a bit more aggressive, going from fourth in walk percentage to 12th, so that they can focus more on making contact and cutting their strikeout percentage down from 18th to 13th. By being more aggressive at the plate, you have to react more to whatever the pitcher's throwing you, rather than being able to pick your spots more and look for your pitch to hit. And since you're walking less, you're getting less for sure opportunities to get on base. But the plus side of this is that by focusing on contact more, you're getting less for sure outs from strikeouts, and you make more happen with guys being able to move around the bases on hits and even on productive outs. Leading the offense over the stretch has been the former MVP Cody Bellinger, playing like an MVP once again. Over 51 games, he slashed 367, 409, 596 with 11 home runs, a 169, nice, WRC plus, and his 2.7 F war would have him on pace for 8.6 over 162 games, with eight war in a season being MVP level production. And Bellinger here has been a great example of this change in approach. Over his career, he's been more of a patient hitter with a real swing and miss tendency, but he seems to have completely flipped this now being more aggressive and only walking 7.2% of the time since June 9th, but this has helped him make contact more consistently and cut down his strikeout percentage to 12.5%. Their big free agent signing this offseason, Dansby Swanson, missed 10 games with a heel contusion in July, but over 44 games slashed 244, 308, 494 with 12 home runs, a 115 WRC+, 
and 1.6 F4 on pace for 5.9 over 162 games. So putting up over all-star level production with power at the plate and his defense at short. Now while these two key guys in their lineup have been producing at a really high level, a couple of their other veteran players have kind of struggled during this hot streak. Ian Happ has cooled off a bit here, but the power has really come alive for him in 55 games slashing 209, 331, 418 with 10 home runs, a 105 WRC plus, and his .9 F4 would put him at 2.7 over 162. So just over your everyday starter kind of production from a player that's about to head into his three year $61 million extension. And Seiya Suzuki has really struggled here lately in 47 games slashing 244, 307, 389 with five home runs in 88 WRC plus and his .3 F4 would put him on pace for one war over 162. Half of the production of an everyday starter. But then to help fill in the gaps here, you have Nico Horner in the midst of another really good season who hit 284, 346, 428 over 56 games with five home runs while also stealing 16 bags, put up a 112 WRC plus and 2.0 F4 was on pace for 5.8 over 162. So giving the Cubs a pair of all-star level performers in the middle of their infield. And Mike Talkman has come out of nowhere here, taking some of the center field duties off of Bellinger's plate. In 51 games, he hit 272, 357, 456 with seven home runs, a 122 WRC plus, and 1.3 F4, putting him at 4.1 over 162. So the offense has still been one of the better in baseball. And now for the starting rotation, they've still been getting pretty good results, it just hasn't looked nearly as pretty. Their ERA has gone from rank 6th to 4th, but their 5th went from 10th in the league down to 22nd, with their F4 also dropping from 8th to 13th. Now they've still been going at hitters here about the same. We know this is a group that pitches more to contact, so they're not going to get a ton of strikeouts, but this is going to help them to cut down on the walks. But hitters have kind of been able to figure out how these pitchers are attacking them, and the hitters have been getting some better results. The Cubs rotation has been getting hit way more than earlier in the season. Their average allowed has dropped from 5th in baseball to 25th, and their homers per 9 went from 5th to 22nd. As a pitcher, if you're going to pitch to contact, to be effective, you need to be getting the hitters to make contact how you want them to. And it's not great to be a contact pitcher that's getting knocked around unless you want to go pro at throwing BP. But since June 9th, they've had the lowest exit velocity and the second lowest barrel percentage allowed, which means that they haven't been getting hit hard or even really hit well all that often. So we're probably looking at a lot of hits that are just finding that spot where nobody's at, and the few times that they have gotten barreled up, those have gone for homers and not much else. Cubs fans, let me know if this is what you've been seeing. You definitely watch more of their games than I do as Mariners fans, so I've got to base this mostly off what the stats are telling me. At the top of this rotation has been first-time All-Star Justin Steele. Over 10 starts since June 9th, he went 58 innings with a 2.95 ERA and a 3.65 FIP, attacking batters to get an above-average strikeout rate and really keeping the walks down. But he's been one of these starters that's been getting hit a little bit more often with a 269 nice average allowed and giving up a couple more homers here as well 1.24 homers per nine but now the highest paid guy in this rotation marcus stroman has really struggled over this stretch through 49 and two-thirds innings in 10 starts putting up a 616 era but a 377 fit struggling to go at hitters and get strikeouts he's been giving up quite a few walks and hits but what he's done pretty well here has managed to keep the ball in the ballpark, only .54 homers per nine. Now, Stroman did end up hitting the 15-day IL on August 1st with hip inflammation, so he could have been trying to kind of tough this out here for a little bit, which could have kind of led to some of these struggles. Then Jamison Tyone, who the Cubs signed this offseason to add some depth to this rotation, he put up a 4.82 ERA and a 4.70 FIP in 61 and two-thirds innings through 11 starts, keeping the walks down 6 
6.5% of the time, but struggling to get strikeouts with a 19.6% strikeout rate, and that's led to him giving up some more hits and quite a few homers, so not quite adding the quality length to this rotation that they had hoped for. So with the offense keeping up their high level of production and the rotation still holding their own despite their struggles, what's been the biggest difference here in turning around the Cubs season to this point has been the bullpen, which went from 24th in ERA to 4th, but only improved from 20th in FIP to 16th and from 24th in F4 to 19th. They've evened out a bit both ways here with their strikeout percentage dropping from rank 7th to 12th and their walk percentage improving from 28th to 22nd. The big difference for them, again, just to basically be like the exact opposite of the starting pitchers, has been giving up way less damage with the bats. They dropped their homers per nine from 20th down to 12th and their average allowed went from 23rd to the best in baseball since June 9th. And we see that with high strikeout pitchers, they tend to give up weaker contact on balls in play, and that leads to a lower average and less home runs. But now these guys have actually been getting hit pretty hard over the stretch. They've been 21st in exit velo and 26th in hard hit percentage. So if you probably combine a bit of luck here on these hard hit balls going towards the defense and the fifth highest infield fly ball rate, so giving you more sure outs on some of these balls that do get put in play. And again, Cubs fans, let me know if this is what you've seen happening. And now we start seeing better numbers from these relievers. Closing out games here for the Cubs has been Adbert Alzoli with 14 saves in 24 games since June 9th, over 24 and two thirds innings, putting up a 292 ERA and a 274 FIP, going right at hitters for a ton of strikeouts 30% of the time, and hardly any walks, less than half of MLB average, which has made it really tough to hit him, let alone to take him yard. And in front of him, you've had Mark Leiter Jr. with a 2-3-3 ERA and a 3-5-3 FIP in 27 innings over 27 games, and Julian Merriweather with a 3-3-3 ERA and a 3-9-4 FIP in 27 innings over 26 games. Then to help turn things around here in the bullpen, Michael Fulmer has bounced back after a bit of a slow start in 23 games, he pitched 24 innings with a 1.88 ERA and a 3.64 FIP. He was really tough to hit, a 179 average, and to square him up, 0.75 homers per nine. He was racking up Ks, but giving up quite a few walks too. The bullpen is oftentimes the last part of a winning team that you worry about putting together, but a good bullpen can be make or break for a team that's looking to make a real run. If the Cubs are gonna keep this up and have a shot at both the playoffs and winning the NL Central, they're gonna need the bullpen to keep this up and help out the offense and the rotation. So let me know what you think about all this, whether the bullpen can keep this up, and if you think the Cubs have a real shot at the playoffs here in 2023. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications to help out the channel, and make sure that you don't miss any new baseball content like this when we put out new videos. And next, go ahead and check out the video that's on your screen now to find out about Braxton Garrett, who could be one of the ace pitchers in baseball right now that's just hiding in plain sight, and how he can use B-War, F-War, and another mystery stat to find out a pitcher's true talent. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Later.